Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and here quickly to show you a piece of, uh, of uh, Fiesta ware. It's a, a kind of a radioactive dishware that was made in the United States. It was made, it's still made actually, you can buy it today. I own a lot of it um, actually, but uh, this is a piece of radioactive dishware. It was made in the, this guy right here, probably in the 1930s, um, but it's been made radioactive since the 30s all the way up until uh, the 1970s. Um, at past that, it's not radioactive anymore, and only a few of the colors are radioactive. There's a white radioactive version, and there's the famous reddish orangish version. This is the reddish orange. I love the reddish orange. And the stuff you buy today, by the way, is not radioactive. The reason it was it's radioactive is because the company used um, uranium as one of the colorants. Uranium has been used as a colorant all the way back to the Roman Empire. It makes a really, really good color, and it's extremely vibrant and rich and all that sort of stuff. And it can make many different colors. Uh, let me just quickly show you. I don't want to affect my spectrum too much here, but uh, like here's a piece of, uh, whew, how about focus? I have this new camera. It's all nice and super crisp, but the problem is you do have to do the focus manually, I think. Uh, so anyway, because it's a DSLR, it's not really meant for videos. So there's a piece of canary glass colored with uranium. And here is a piece of depression glass colored with uranium. Again, notice both of these are green or yellow and green and stuff. They're different colors, I guess, is the best way to put it. And of course, consumer objects have been for years made, let me show you this, with uh, radioactive materials like this thorium lens, this thoriated lens here. It's a camera lens that has thorium in it, so you're able to get better color and everything with this lens, but it's radioactive. Um, back just to show you what I mean by that, um, put a Geiger counter up against it, see? Radioactive. Anyway, let's move that out of the way so we don't mess our, our spectrum up too much. This isn't really a scientific test, obviously. I would have this in my lead testing chamber if I were actually trying to be super specific. But as you can see here, this is a multi-channel spectrum analyzer connected to this little polymaster cesium iodide thallium dope scintillator. What happens is when the gamma rays and x-rays shoot off of this plate, they're getting absorbed into this crystal. The crystal is making little flashes that are getting picked up by a detector, and the flashes are proportionate to the energy of the gamma that hits it. And so this little graph can be made. It's an x by by graph. So the x here going across is the number, of the amount of energy. That's low energy, and this is high energy. It goes all the way across. And then these little lines here are the channels. Each channel is, um, takes, uh, absorbs a specific type of energy, specific um, amount of energy. So here's low energy, and it counts, counts, counts. Here's lower, higher energy, it counts, counts, counts. And you see little statistical trends, like these little peaks are forming here, that tell you that at around this particular energy range right here, something showed up. You can see because this peak here is more defined than other ones. And there's a lot of math to know if it's actually true and stuff. We're not getting to that. Just looking at this guy right here, I see a protactinium peak, and I see uh, uranium x-rays, um, probably some thorium, uh, maybe 230, maybe 120 something or other, I think it's 124 off the top of my head. I have to go back and look that one up to be absolutely sure. But anyhow, uh, this is enough to tell me this is probably a natural uranium spectrum I'm looking at, and of course I sort of already know it is. Um, unlike most devices, just out of curiosity, let's see if we can identify anything. Does this identify anything? Background. Protactinium-234, radium-226, uranium-235. Hey, look at that. This thing detected it. You can't probably see that on the on the um, screen very well. Let me kind of move in here unless you get a good look at that. But look at that. It detected them, um, confidence intervals, and all this other stuff, too. Thank you, Polymaster. Or as I famously say, go, Polymaster, go. Well, anyway, sounds like Pokemon, right? Uh, if I get out of this, I can go back. Oops. And we can go back to... Uh, stop accumulation, and we can quickly look at, f at a few other quick things. We can go to neutron count. We can go to search mode. Let's see how many gammas we're getting. We're getting about 61 uh, gammas per second. Uh, neutron uh, count is usually 0 0.14 counts per second in the lab. So I think we're getting a little neutron radiation. Clear statistics, who we get. Uh, this is time, that's neutrons detected. So basically put, um, I have a lot of people that tell me the neutron detector in here doesn't work, the lithium-6 iodide, europium doped, the detectors are like, oh, those are, those, are, those are gamma rays that you're falsely detecting, and this does falsely detect gamma rays, like well, many neutron detectors do that, see, I just found one. Um, but it, I've actually tested this um, very carefully, I've posted my results before on the internet using things like paraffin wax and lead and other stuff to, to show and prove that it actually does. Uh, ooh, battery's getting low, but it actually is detecting uh, neutrons, so it is working. So it's got 1 in 30 seconds, 2 in 30 seconds. It's looking like 3 or 4 counts per minute, so maybe not too much. All right, so let's move you out of the way for a second. We'll put you over here, and then we're going to take out a Geiger counter and see what we get. The Geiger counter gets usually at 30 to 40 counts per minute in the lab. 
as you can see, 26,000, 24,000 counts per minute. Look at my thumb, I got chopped off in a bait grinder when I was younger. Isn't it all messed up looking? So 26,000, so it gets a lot. But most of that's alpha, which isn't really too dangerous to you if it stays on the outside of your body. You see. Alrighty, let's put that down there. I gotta get the autofocus to work on this thing. And let's try one last detector before we give up. Let's try the scintillator. Because scintillators are scintillating. Because that, that joke's never been used before, right? Alright, so here we go. This is a Ludlum Model 12. You guys have probably seen me use this thing before. It has a sodium iodide thallium dope scintillator on the front. So a crystal scintillator, just like the other one. And uh, let's look and see what we're set to. We're currently set to, I'm actually looking through the camera, I should probably not do it that way, times 100 mode. What that means is that our background, which is about 3,000 counts per minute, uh, is right here displayed. It's 0, 10,000, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 counts per minute. And as you can hear, the background's pretty intense. This is just background. This thing's pretty sensitive. So let's put this on the plate, see what we get. Oops. 10,000. Wow, oh, dead center. 12, can't, do we get a, do we get a 12,000? Looks like 12,000. Not bad. Not bad. So, that right there is just a simple Fiesta Wear plate. Perfectly, um, perfectly not any trouble to have around. Um, you can have a collection of these things in your house. They aren't going to harm you. There is, of course, always a risk with radiation because it is uh, weekly. It's pretty much weekly carcinogenic, but it is a little carcinogenic. That's why you should always try to, like, you know, don't just get x-rays for fun. You know, don't do stuff like that. Don't, don't eat all of this stuff. Don't sleep it under your pillow. But if you've got some, like, you know, grandma and grandpa have, like, a collection of this sitting around, you don't need to throw it away. You can keep it. It looks nice. Just don't eat off of it. As for the Fiesta Wear, the new stuff is completely safe. It doesn't have anything like that in it. This is the old, like, legacy stuff. And I think it's neat to collect, personally. That's just me. So this has been Tom from anti-proton.com, and bye-bye. Um,